Hello, welcome back to Beno Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, we're gonna try to revisit the reaction diffusion um, setup using Blender Compositor, and hopefully, we can create something like this very, very easily. This is actually um, this is a live photo video from my iPhone converted into this uh, weird reaction diffusion pattern, and yeah, I think this. It's not like exactly beautiful, but it's kind of interesting and I found it maybe we can use it as a texture or some sort for creatures. Um, if you look at um, reaction diffusions, just Google search it and there is one article by Neil Blevins here from 2015. He talked a bit about reaction diffusions and what he thinks about it. And then uh, he showed this tutorial how you can do it using Photoshop. And this is pretty interesting. It's not new, but uh, still really something that uh, need to be explored further in Blender. So I talked about this before. And so let's try to do it. This is um, this is the photo I took. That I, will, I will be using this photo. And let's see the setup really quick. So I think just need to hit escape. And currently I'm using my photo swimming. Um, I'm gonna change it to this other photo. Where is it? Okay, this guy right here. I think this picture is actually quite large. So depending on the resolution or this setup is actually uh, resolution dependent. Let me try just uh, reducing the processing. So that's uh, let me delete some of this. We don't need all these nodes. We only need a couple. And so basically, um, the process is like this: we create some kind of processing, and the processings will take an image as input, any image with any color. Uh, the resolution will matter, but you basically do uh, two two type of blur. One is more blurry than the other, and then you subtract it with the other. So you kind of like blurring an image. And the next uh, the next step, um, you are using something like a level or something like curve. In here, I'm actually using map range, and map range will actually make the image the result of this uh, blur difference and sharpen it again so you have like blurring and sharpening and you do this a couple of time until you get a uh, some kind of a reaction diffusion result so this one is kind of getting there but i think i let me try this is like five processing let me try this this is 10 time processing and this is much much better and you are started to see this uh, this weird reaction diffusion pattern I actually really like this one um, the image the original image I took you see this is using the iPhone I think this is the medium quality it's quite high res uh, let me check this is um, so this is around 4 megapixel and the iPhone takes 12 megapixel this is so it's uh, this is still quite high res and then it takes just few seconds to uh, to process in Blender, and if you want to see it, the step by step, you can actually process it like this. It's kind of interesting if you think about it. Sometimes the process is more interesting than the final result. If you just get the final result, um, that's fine as well. Um, what's interesting is that if we keep going with the the same process, you know, like blurring and sharpening. And blurring and sharpening over and over again, you will start to get um, either like a, some kind of equilibrium, you know, like the middle value. You can't go anymore. There's like the black and the white will create like a very distinct um, hard edge, like this. And then let me try actually do it this a couple more time. This is I think a very powerful workflow, even though this is really really simple. So I will have like 12 processing and if I go inside 
and if I change the value, um, this value will matter. The size and the factor also will matter. It will give a different result. And there's also this uh, blurring coefficient. So if, if I make it like 10 and 20, now my CPU is working really hard to give a result. See, you get a thicker line. And yeah, this is really, really cool, I, I found. You can, because this is using Blender compositing, remember it's not cycles, it's Blender compositing, so it's a, it's a post-processing. Um, you can, the nice thing about compositing is that you can easily do blurring and sharpening. Um, you can also use uh, not just a single image, you can use a movie or image sequence and you can get quite a really nice result like this very, very easily. Um, at some point, I actually think, okay, maybe I can use this image, bring it into Blender Cycles, and kind of do, kind of use it like a as a as a procedural texture in a way. It's 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 a semi-procedural one because because we have um, an image already, and then we kind of process it, and we get this kind of pattern. But it can be really interesting. I couldn't connect compositing back into cycles because compositing seems like the last processing and then cycles it's a like a before processing in blender but if we are using two blender we can export out this result and then bring it into another blend uh, blender uh, scene and then we just process it using cycles i think that's gonna be a, a really nice workflow in fact if we are if we are rendering a 3d here for now uh, if I try to do that. Maybe I'll try with Suzanne. So Suzanne, normal Suzanne. This is Blender Cycles and I will do a quick render. I need to have a camera. Camera view. Align active camera to view. So we have Suzanne just maybe just give it a principles. PSDF. Okay, metallic uh yeah i think that's fine and reframe it a little bit let's do a quick render small resolution that's i think that's fine i'll try rendering this out maybe i need a light actually uh i definitely need a light it's too dark so let's render this out and then try to process it using the compositor let's see what we're gonna get this is the viewer node this is the final result it looks blank because i think i need to go back to the compositor and then instead of using image i will have to use a compositor Render layers, okay. I think that's the one. Do we have anything? We have blank image. So I might might have done something incorrect here. Active camera. Try rendering. So we have Suzanne. Give it a color. It's pretty boring render. Let me try. So I'm rendering Suzanne and the composite will take over on top of it. Ah, okay. So we got it now. So this is Suzanne. It's being processed in here. Let me try changing the coefficient. You can see how the effects kind of starting to appear. And I think I can do a couple more. So, so this is like a combo. Um, some people call it like, like a chaining of uh, post-processing. Sometimes this subtract actually give you kind of interesting result as well. Maybe you can animate this part and also don't forget you can adjust this 
a little bit more and you can get quite interesting result <clears throat> simply by changing the value here so I believe this is kind of nice we want to perhaps get the whole pattern to fill the, the screen um, let me try so this will give more detail if I keep doing that but I believe if I go up and then do this more maybe I can get a more interesting result but again it's a you get the, the drill right you have a single process you have a simple process once again you have an image and you process it with blur with two different value and then subtract it and then here you are making like a really high contrast and get a just super high contrast black and white and then you do it multiple times you you group you group the whole nodes and make sure the input and the output is going to be the same and then do it a couple of times you get this this is actually really interesting now that we know we are able to do this um, you can easily like uh, think about the same thing but let's say if you are like you have vertex weight or vertex pain and paint and you do the blurring and sharpening over and over again you might be able to do this um, for vertex color or vertex weight as well and you get a, this same interesting pattern but more in 3d so if you have like a bunch of point cloud or volumetric if you know how to blur and how to sharpen it over and over again you might get this interesting uh, reaction diffusion pattern you see there's a there's like some gray that's mean that they are kind of leaking i don't know this is uh, unusual as well and I kind of like it when that's kind of happening um, so yeah it's a uh, pretty interesting it's not like this is like the most basic of reaction diffusion example I think and there are others um, some people doing it in Houdini and they they managed to create a lot of uh, interesting pattern that way um, so yeah if you do this using volumetric you will get interesting pattern that resemble like a like a plant you know like something like this or zebra or this fish texture so it's really kind of related to procedural texture so there you go that's um, another look at reaction diffusion in blender using blender compositor i can do it a lot faster now because i have a better uh, computer better machine with a lot of cpu i don't use gpu actually this is just a cpu but it's working really hard as you can tell from the sound so yeah um, give this a try yourself and see what you can come up with maybe maybe in here instead of just blurring and con increasing the contrast you can use different processing you know like uh, but I don't know blender compositor has very uh, limited number of nodes to do the to do the uh, texturing or actually displacement but you can you can use um different trick you know um there's just unlimited way to do this so there you go that's a quick way uh, you can do reaction diffusion simple one in blender using blender compositor this is really powerful because you can bring in your own animations you can also render 3d and then get this result okay so let's do it one again once more if you don't believe me this is suzanne i'm gonna subdivide it gonna give it wireframe modifier maybe I should not do that yeah okay Suzanne wireframe modifier and give a darker color do a quick render this one will get rendered and the result looks slightly different and it's uh, too high res I gotta go back make this render at zero subdivisions so it's rendering Suzanne let's wait wait a couple of seconds once this done it's gonna bring it into compositor compositor is doing its job and we get a new result instantly you get this art <laughs> all right you can print it out as a t-shirt or something so there you go Thanks again for tuning in and hopefully you find this useful. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Bye.